So, the painful story is an, a series of ongoing incidents between Big Bernice and Little Richard, right? So, I don't know why, but Bernice and I worked together a lot. I mean, I did <laughs> chores for him. My oldest brother was gone. I guess that was like the oldest kid. And uh, had to milk the cow in the morning or the night whenever Bernice did the opposites because the, mil the milk cow had to be milked twice a day. Fed the chickens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he took me around on my paper route every Sunday morning because my papers were too big. The Washington Star was that thick. And, um, and every Saturday night, he, he ran the teen club for the, the county recreation center for which he got $10. And he built himself a wood shop with that money. So we worked together a lot. So when I was a freshman in college, I bought a Vespa motor scooter and he was dying to try it. I'm starting to get theatrical, aren't I? I'm starting to get like Vita. He was dying to try it. So he rides off on my little Vespa motor scooter and I'm waiting for him to come back. It's time for him to come back. He's not back. And he went up around Hamby's, Hamby's house and we're looking up the old dirt road to see where Big Bernice went. He's nowhere to be found. Half hour later, he comes back pushing the motor scooter. He had fallen off and he had a whole pocket full of old TV tubes in his pocket and they were all smashed. He kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll get it fixed because he dented my feet. He, he fell, yeah, he fell down. You know, so that's, that's one, right? So uh, he's digging a well. Now, you know the walkers, they're doing all the work themselves. There's always sweat equity, right? So they built a new house in 52, but they didn't have a well for it because he'd already done that well over there and it was too far to pump water. So he's digging a well. He's three or four well rings down and you know they're three foot high. He, you dig a hole and you sink the well ring down. You dig a little farther down. You put another well ring on. It all sinks down. You keep digging it out. Well, he was three of them down. That's nine feet. Well, old Richard's up top with the hoist with a big steel bucket. And dad's filling up the big steel bucket. Haul it up, dump it out. One more time, haul it up, dump it out. Well, you know me, I'm slow, right? So I'm not paying attention. I, d I tried to hook the bucket back on the rope and I dropped it. Oh, no. Wham! Right on top of Big Burnus's bald head. And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> so... That's two. So uh, back at, back in those days, you had a question. Who turned the tractor over? Did Bernice turn it over, or was that Jim? Uh, I must have been Jim because I don't know about that one. So now, uh, Dad had because he came out of this horse-drawn era, right? Uh, and the way to inexpensively get farm tools was to take an old horse-drawn a sickle bar mower or a hay rake or disc or something like that. He, he, would, um, he would take a horse-drawn device, take the tree out of it, put a tongue on it. I would be the operator. I would pull it up and down and he would drive the tractor, right? So we were a, a team again. So these sickle bar mowers have blades on them that are triangular and they're bratted on with two brads. And if you ever seen a ball peen hammer that that peen on the other side, that's for knocking down brads, right? So dad has got one of these things and I'm holding it for him. He's going bang, kabang, kabang, like that. Kabing! And that hammer hit me in the shin. And I went. Oh. And he said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the most I'm sorry he's ever got out of my dad. <laughs> but it hurt so bad I couldn't talk. <laughs> All right, that's the end of me.